Youth of Purpose. Hello, welcome to Youth of Purpose, a show that is here to give you a platform as young people to be able to contribute to the development of this country, Uganda. I do believe that as young people, we have a take in what happens in our nation and therefore we should be able to have a platform where we have discussions on what we think Uganda should be. Today on the show, I want us to discuss something that is very, very pertinent in the development of this country. We are having a very educated generation, mm -hmm. but seems a bit so ignorant, um, and that is because of a number of reasons. And today we shall be looking at one of them, which is basically moral decadence. A very, very big issue that we have been decrying out there, the government, and uh, mostly we've seen the first lady decrying the issue of moral degeneration in this country and uh, also so much in the institutions of learning. Today I want to see what is the cause of that and what we can be able to do, what role you can play as a young person out there mm -hmm. to make sure that you're not a victim but at the same time sure. you can help your fellows to make sure that we are a morally upright generation. I welcome you to this show. My name is Ivan Tomkonde and I have a panel of young people, very intelligent, capable, young leaders that are going to help us to delve into this discussion. Starting on my far left, Hafashima Nasebwe. Welcome to Youth of Purpose. Kindly say hello to the viewer. <coughs> my name is Asimo Hafashimana and I'm glad to be part of the solutions of the current generation challenges. That is my name. I also work with Sowaway, but I've also worked with Unza just a year back. Thank you. Hope to share more. Welcome. Belinda. Uh, hello, viewers. My name is Amanya Belinda. I am a law student at Gulu University and the 21st Vice Guild President of Gulu University. It is a pleasure to be back. Amazing. Piloya. The future of this country belongs to the young people. And uh, the aspect of morality is a key uh, aspect in this discussion. Good morning to the viewers out there. My name is Piloya Barbara Nyoko. I, I am a youth, Ugandan youth from Omoro district. And as well, a fourth year law student at Uganda Christian University. Thank you so much, Piloya. Uh, starting with you, Belinda, help us um, understand this concept of uh, morality, <coughs> values, and uh, the issue that we are decrying decadence. Help us introduce us to, to the topic. Well, my understanding about morality and values is that they come from somewhere or they're implanted in us or we hold on to them because of the way they are attached to us. Someone may say I get them on a Christian basis or a religious basis. I uh, follow these values and morals because I am probably a Christian. I am a Muslim. I am Hindu. I am a uh, African traditionalist, anything, because I do believe that every religion tied to it is a certain moral degree and moral standard that they have prescribed, and that is how it has always been. Someone may say uh, probably philosophy, whichever. So to me, morals are just a standard of good and bad, or a uh, standard of right and wrong that has been inculcated in us, probably from somewhere. I don't believe... They just came and fell on us, but I think they came from somewhere. They have reasoned back to them. And so for us to live properly and guide ourselves as humans, we live to them and work in line with them so that we can achieve a good living with the people around us and we can be commendable people, socially accepted with our behaviors and way of life. Good. Asimwe, what is your opinion about morals and what does it mean to you? I just want to give a, a reference of where I come from. I come from Kisoro district. And uh, traditionally, even when I was personally growing, we used to sit around the fireplaces for storytelling to tell us about how our ancestors lived, our grandfathers, and those that we never saw by the time we grew up. So around that fireplace, we were inspired by our elders within a, a grand setting. So each of us were told how to rise up and become either a man of value or a woman of substance. That was value itself. So because of the need to raise a generation of young people that their parents would be able to admire with time, even if you went to your 
place where you come from, there is a say, can't you be a son of so and so? That would mean that the son of so and so is actually in a better form and they are well behaved. So even up to date, it can be used to be collaboratively. You must be aware that today we have about 1.2 billion youth globally. And if I told you not to talk about values and culture, but also the morality bit of it, because there has been what you call the generational gap. Generational gap means that the elders have ignored the young people, and also the young people do not have the effort to approach the elders. So there has been all that kind of gap. So I think that today only asks us to actually think and find an nexus on how the elders can come back to the young ones, but also the young ones seeking for mentorship. In Jesus' setting, he calls it becoming a good shepherd, also looking for the sheep. So I want to believe that the young people are the sheep, then the elders maybe are the shepherds. But there is a bit of becoming good shepherd. So it's on this point you know, that I want to say that it's important to talk about moral laws, but also how we can embrace a generation of value-based young people, something like that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Pillar, your opinion on morals. Uh, to me, how you live your life, what you feed your mind on, and uh, what you see, what you foreshadow for yourself, in itself brings about the aspect of moral. Um, the young people oftentimes have lived a life of uh, wanting to imitate somebody. Like, I want to be like Belinda because Belinda does this, ABC. I want to be like Ivan because Ivan uh, portrays an aspect that I really admire. So to me, I think moral, moral how the people have portrayed the moral, is uh, having to follow a trend that has already been set for the moral path that is already there and they are trying to follow up. Uh, when you look at the, uh, the cultural aspect, when you look at the, when the traditions, I'll refer to my own culture because I am uh, well conversant, but when you look at the low culture, like the fireplace, we call it Wang O. Yeah, the elders used to, grow, uh, to sit around there and every child, just like a fashion man has said, was a child to every parent around that fire. So even when you did something wrong, you were stopped from doing that thing there and then and you would really obey because then the aspect of moral was clearly shown. And these parents also lived uh, a, a very exemplary life that you would follow a parent because this one has gone for hunting and you will just feel so sad, seated. And there is that, that, that push and pull that will actually always give you the view of, I can't stay home. So to me, moral is the pace that has been set for us and we follow. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's so amazing. Basically, um, what I can say is that we have so much become of what we are not supposed to be we're so good at what we're not supposed to be mm, and we feel so proud of that and um, that is attributed to a number of uh, factors that we shall be looking at later uh, in the show but majorly i want us to look at two things sexual immorality drug abuse the two that move together and our behaviors in a community leave out those two you talk about the way we dress we talk about the way we talk, the way we carry ourselves. And that's what I want us to look at and be able to determine whether that makes us stand for who we are as Africans, as a Ugandan, mm. as a person from Chisoro. And you'll find that we get so um, you know, perplexed when you go back and people don't want to identify okay. with you, okay. when you go back to the village. And the only thing you can do is to feel they are less of value because they are not identifying with you. And you feel you're so, you're so high. But it's because you're becoming different and you're not acting as the society expects. Mm -hmm. Of which I want to believe that going to school should be able to help us to better who we are. Not to change who we are, but better who we are to fit in the global village what is happening and what is the kind of stand that you can be able to show us in as far as moral decadence what are those things that you look at in the locality where you live and you feel threatened mm -hmm. because of the moral decadence what are those issues that are happening belinda that you can be able <coughs> to break down for us one i'd like to start by uh as a good christian from what the bible tells us that without direction a nation falls, or I'd like to actually rephrase it and say without direction, a generation fades away and it falls. 
by this we are just looking at when we look at the youth today and the world we are living in who is giving the directions who is setting the standard when you go for example to social media when you run to social media the people that are setting a pace for us or the people that are setting a certain pace and a certain picture of morality could differ from what our parents and grandparents referred to as morality and so because of a difference of who do we listen to and which audience are these guys looking at our parents back then probably had the audience we used to give them audience because they created the avenues for the audience to be given to them but in a world in a generation where probably parents are too busy looking for money we need to feed you we need to do what some of those that detaching and also we we've kind of feel uh, there at years you know we are in new times it's kind of a different world so the people we are listening to that are giving us the commands and the directions are also taking up um that opportunity to deviate us from what we knew for example when you look at uh dress code let me start with dress code i recently have a friend at at university her name is Martha found a certain gentleman wearing chains and then rings and then so much things around him and he stood and asked him when we you, which course are you studying he said education he said so mr teacher sir as a teacher does your profession's moral code of conduct justify that you should dress like this and this guy looked at him and said no and said then why are you wearing like this and then she said i am not your mother but the mochiga in me is going to discipline you so she wow. takes the rings away and everything wow. and it it looked funny and we all laughed and kind of asked but why and he's like I had to do it I just couldn't let it pass she took the rings and so you get to see to him it is fashionable to dress like that but when you ask him does your profession dignify or signify or justify the fact that you should be dressed like that he said no then why are you doing it because he says it fashionable from whoever is giving him the commands we continue we look at at different styles still just could and what the things our parents cannot accept us to do you should look at we the so called kampala girls when we go back to our villages you know what to put on you know these long dresses this di- so you become a different person so you're living a life of double standards because you probably in a two world no one probably understands you this world understands you different or does not care and then there is another world which is concerned when you continue for example and look at the current problem we are trying to deal with which is homosexuality where did it come from from our culture there is i've not heard of any culture which really signified and said um marriage or relationships should be between man and man or woman and woman it has never existed in our gen- in our in our, our world culture. in our cultures in my world it was unheard of but here we are when someone tells you i can identify as transgender i can identify as this and so somehow somewhere the people who are giving the commands are being different and perhaps they have their reasons today morning as i conclude i watched a certain clip of a guy who was saying that the united states is coming to us with a lot of money for human rights for us to protect things like uh, to protect human rights in a sense of i can identify as just gender i can do abcd and then there is china and russia who are coming to us and saying security we are bringing weapons we are bringing right. this and so it's like don't you see that if there is a war this one knows that to mm-hmm. capture you is through this and so because of all those other things that are being created around the world which sometimes we do not have prior knowledge with but because someone we admire everyone says they have an american dream but someone once said by the way it's not an american dream the day you realize that africa just because it is not sold out to look like it is worth dreaming about is why you think america is better and is why you want to copy their lifestyle so because of i'd like to say the master the commander who have we fixed our eyes on to to receive commands from who sets the standard and the purpose that is why we are having what we are having today Amazing great conversation. Uh I'll be moving to uh Asimwe before we go in for for a break. And uh basically I want us to look at the issue of uh drug abuse and I would want the ladies to comment on that too mm-hmm. because I, I can tell you it's worsening. The way majorly right now previously there was so much young guys in high school at universities doing drugs. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you the way young ladies are doing drugs today it's so 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 bad why do you think we are getting where we are today thank you comrade tumukonde first i want to 
inform our great viewers that drug abuse that doesn't just happen like that. It has causes, and of course the cause is that uh, there is increased levels of poverty. And when you are poor, it also means that you are not just poor because you do not have liquid cash, but because you are poor in the mind. Poor in the mind means that as a generation you do not have uh, values. That's why ideally I have always kept engaging the young people that we would want to have a generation whose actions are triggered and moved by their set core values, vision and mission statements. That means if we talk about a generational talk, a generational engagement, these values cannot be pushed aside. Now, because of a drug abuse of the mind, you do not plan. And I've also had elders say, even if they are among the young people, that failure to plan is planning to fail and vice versa, something like that. So because there has been that talk, it has made some of the young people remain in their comfort zones. And we have also developed a talk that you must be able to rise up, speak up and stand up. Standing up means that you are ignoring what could have been bad and you are taking on the good side. But also it's important that even when we see our institutional uh, heads, there has, you see, in each of the universities, even if it was in high schools and secondary schools, there is a guidance and counseling unit. But some of these units not actually live to the standards of the expectations of the students, even the administration. <coughs> so there has not been enough by these guidance and counseling units to actually embark on inspiring and asking these students to engage themselves into productive activities. For example, it would be also wise that to talk about how a student would you know, it's actually when we say, don't do this, we tell them what to do. You are defining a problem, but also a solution, wrong lasting solution actually. Yeah. So because of poverty in the mind, there has been a problem of failure to understand what you are here for. Mm -hmm. When you read a book of purpose driven life, it tells you clear that you are not here on earth by accident. There is a reason as to why you are here. So when you indulge yourself into those maladjusted behaviors, you are not able to actually understand consuming this drug is actually bad. But you're also aware that alcohol is part of the drugs. So when you consume alcohol, you are also part of the drug abusers. Mm -hmm. Now, that is failure to understand actually what you are here on us for. For example, you should be aware that where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Abuse is a combination of abnormality and the use of a proper something of the sort. So because there has been that abuse of the purpose that you are supposed to be doing here, that's why our young people, even elders by the way, drug abuse is not just among the young people but also our elders. At the end of the day, it is the young that is coping from the elders. That's why a generational talk like this embarks on reaching out to young people. Why? Because it, in the past recent, it is projected that between the date of 2015 and 2050, youth themselves will be croaking 15 years, 1.9 billion youth globally. That means that our effort must be targeting that wider group. But also you're aware that here in Uganda, Uganda is one of the fastest growing population among the young people. 22 being the youth, 18 to 30, and of course the others, that sums up to 78% here in Uganda. That means that when you talk about drug abuse, we also uh, tackle the issue of uh, marijuana, uh, they call it enjai. But also what you consume, like uh, Comrade Piroya said, you cannot hear to a song of a chai wenjai and you tell me that you want to and, do and, drug and, abuse. And it becomes a hit. Oh, yeah. It becomes a hit. It is what the young people like. So the issue of being inspired to aspire with others mm -hmm. depends on how much far you are exposed mm -hmm. and the person you talk to. Hold it there. Hold mm -hmm. it there, Simo. We are going in for a short break, but the conversation is definitely getting heated in here. We shall be right back to continue with this conversation. Welcome back. You're still watching Youth of Purpose, a show that is here to give you a platform as young people to be able to discuss all issues under the sun concerning us. As we went into the break, Asimo was uh, trying to help us understand how the issue of values can make you end up, you know, doing things that you shouldn't be doing. And values is not about the issues that we say values that a society should be able to have, but as an individual, what do you look yourself and, and, and be able to tell who you are? Mm -hmm. what, what, what is that thing that you value so much about yourself and people outside can look at you and be able to admire? The moment you lose that value about yourself, then you can do any stupid thing because at, at, at times you will find people asking, so uh -huh, it's, it's life, you need to just live life the way it is because they don't see that much meaning, that weight in their lives and that's why most of these things really do happen 
Asim, from the issue of values. Yes. Thank you, Ndugu uh, Tumukunde. Now, when you talk about values, that means that there has not been a source of an inspiration. For example, if I engage in myself with these young people, Verinda, uh, Viroya, uh, any other, so this circle that I should do it with closely will define who I do or what I do, who do I talk to, what I speak out. Now, as I sum up this, I want to say that Mother Teresa was very clear when she said that not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. I have done Matatu before. I have also done Puru Tebo. Those are the other dubious activities that are as a result of drug abuse. When you smoke or when you take that enjoy, I didn't say that I took enjoy, no. But I have seen people who do that, they can see one person in food chain. That means if they told they were disturbed, they can say they can fight you. When you fight, you lose. You have also seen that in the secondary schools, people who are, are, are ushers of either striking, when you strike, you crush the glasses, you destroy the buildings around the school, it has been as a result of either consuming a lot of alcohol and the other kind of uh, drugs that are so mm. are dangerous to young people. Now, you realize that at the end of the day, these people are going to be affected mentally. So when your mental, uh, your mental beat is not functional, so well in a good shape, that's when you think of escaping. When you escape, by the way, you need to be aware that today people report with school fees and tuition. So when you indulge yourself into these dubious activities as a student, you are going to start dating. And also I have also tried to champion a talk whereby people are involved into soccer, then you bet, then they eat your cartoon, your cafes. At the end of the day, your parent is crying there. By the way, mm. some of our parents are getting this money out of toy, out of, you know. So I think there is a bit of um, our young people to understand that what we get from our parents because they are supporting us with the school fees and tuition, yeah. it's out of, out of their goodwill and love. Amazing. Thank you so much, Asimwe. Mm. Coming to you, Piloya. Mm. What is happening with young girls? What is this rise in drug abuse amongst corporate young women? Uh, well, uh, it's about mindset. Wow. Just like we, 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 we said earlier on, that uh, when you look at uh, the young people, look at our mothers, how they were growing up. How a young girl would grow modeled into a very responsible woman. The mindset. They were tuned to a brighter future. They were tuned to be the mothers of the country. They were tuned to be the generational mothers that we now foreshadow and we follow. Now, a young girl gets into drug simply because he or she is admiring. I, I talked about looking, having, having models, looking at uh, Belinda doing something. I want to be like her. Mm -hmm. And because because I see myself, the, my future in Belinda, mm -hmm. and Belinda has that aspect of the drug I'll, I'll, I'll do drug as well. So that somehow has drawn the young people to, to drug. But also, mindset, just like I said, that if you do not know what you are up to, if you do not know the values that you, that, that you, you foreshadow, and because you're constrained by some uh, issues, probably you, you, you want to be a lawyer, and your parents cannot afford the tuition. Look at our society. Mm -hmm. There are very many young girls out there who envision to be great, great women of this country. But because the society is constrained they cannot the parents cannot provide them the tuition to become the people that they want to be a girl starts to look up to another lifestyle and he or she or uh, now she gets to the drug itself mm -hmm. so i think the mindset of the young people the, the young people has to be set just like belinda said that we have to we, we have to get, to create a platform where these young people will be trained, these young people will be mentored, but also how they be mentored, the challenges should be addressed. But like I said, one of the challenges is the mindset, the people they look up to. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, the other thing that comes about is the generation that we are now into. Like I said, the, the gap, there is, there is so much gap that we think that we know better than our parents and we can't listen to them. Mm -hmm that you will be stopped from doing ABC mm -hmm. and you looked up to the other standard because, because you feel this is the modern generation and this is our trend. Mm -hmm. You are in the ancient mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. So that, that also has brought in about the drug. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just, just, just a minute. Uh, because of time, I'll just be giving Belinda 30 seconds to also be able to comment on the issue of the drugs. But we're going to continue with this episode next week we just we will just have to continue with this conversation belinda 
she talks about constraints mm -hmm. in society in the community the families where we're coming from but i think we have a better community in terms of resources today mm -hmm. than it was before for example when she talks about young girls not being able to be supported to go to schools previously girls were not even considered to go to school oh, yeah. but oh, they yeah. were not doing drugs what is happening with this issue of drugs among us young women well i'd like to by i would like to start by sharing a personal story when i was joining law school i had to talk to a friend and this is what they told me say there's a lot of stress in law school and a lot of pressure throughout those four years plus ldc it is toxic it is like there's a lot that happens and so it gives me options it's like one if you really are christian like those strong those uh, staunch christians please go deeper and deeper like let god be your stronghold it's like two if you know you 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 can open up to taking alcohol and drugs it will help you to deal with the stress that really comes with law school so that was another option so me then the other one is probably sleeping around and relationships that will also take away your stress so it gives me four choices and it's like think about those four and then you'll figure out your life but truth be told where you're coming to is a dangerous zone and etc so when he tells me all this i, I sit back and i look at myself because at least I have been told, told about purpose, yeah. what do I want to be, where do I visualize myself. I sat and looked at the people who are doing drugs. I, do, I didn't really see a correlation between me wanting to be a lawyer mm -hmm. and then doing drugs. Like, so, that so by, that time, much. by that time, you're weighing out the options that yes, he's given you. Exactly. Perfect. We break it at the options that are most times in life we're given. You either choose your path to go the other way if you're to go African tradition, for example, be that way if you're to go the religious way you go that way and therefore you have the right and the opportunity to choose your path we continue with this episode mm -hmm. next week we're just going to continue with this conversation right here make sure you catch the next episode next week same time youth of purpose